Good evening, I'm Faith Goldie in for Brian Lilly. Canada will carry out a cleaner combat mission than the U.S. That's the topic of tonight's byline. Prime Minister Stephen Harper announced today that Canada is going to war with ISIS. Today we are bringing forward a motion asking this House to confirm its confidence for a government decision to join our allies and partners, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Australia, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, and likely others, in launching airstrikes against ISIL. And the motion is finally behind before the House with a vote on the issue scheduled for Monday, when it'll likely be met by the Commons Kumbaya Choir, an ensemble of Angry Tom's questions on why there's no debate, all the meanwhile being smack dab in the middle of a debate, and of course Commander Conditioner's exclusive attention to humanitarian aid and refugees, promising, by the way, no support for the mission. The uh, Prime Minister in his uh, motion today uh, once again uh, relied on rhetoric rather than facts and information. Uh, he has no plan. He has not uh, justified his case for going to war in Iraq, uh, and therefore the Liberal Party cannot support it. Now, while it's true Kretchen didn't seek opposition approval before committing our combat forces to the very worthwhile mission in Afghanistan, it is the duty of a statesman to ensure any movement from peace to war is done for just reasons. And who, oh boy, is ISIS one pack of SOBs that deserves to see the business end of a gun barrel? In the name of Allah and their Caliph Baghdadi, these monsters, will they point guns at children? They carry out hundreds of mass executions. They force women into sex slavery and commit well, just about every human rights violation imaginable. On top of all of it, yeah, they're oil rich, gaining ground by the day, have our citizens, Canadians, within their ranks, and have called for terror to be carried out on this territory. ويا أيها الموحدون في أوروبا وأمريكا وأستراليا وكندا فإذا قدرت على قتل كافر أمريكي أو أوروبي وأخص منهم الفرنسيين الحاقدين الأنجاس أو استرالي أو كندي أو غيره من الكفار المحاربين رعاية الدول التي تحالفت على الدولة الإسلامية فتوكل على الله واقتله بأي وسيلة أو طريقة كانت Look, this is not Vietnam. This is a foreign policy no-brainer. Canada is now at war, and for a very good reason. Because, well, Harper, he's avoiding all the reasons to actually oppose this war. Unlike Obama, translation, we're staying the heck out of Syria, not arming any terrorists, sorry, I meant moderates, and have a sunset clause. Let me explain. Our men and women in the armed forces will head to Iraq and Iraq alone, unlike the Americans who are in Syria too. And let's be clear, Syria is not Iraq, even if the terror state bleeds between the two. While Obama didn't have congressional approval for either, uh, Iraq's government under Maliki asked for U.S. and foreign intervention to eliminate ISIS. Assad, on the other hand, well, he didn't. Why? Simple. The U.S. solution to ISIS? Yeah, it's arming Assad's enemies. Seriously, when, when, when will the United States of America learn outside of Israel who they for some reason insist on demonizing? They have no real allies in the Middle East. I, I know the whole Shiite Sunni thing gets confusing, Barry, but let me make it simple. It's a holy war. They're fighting each other. When you give them guns, they kill each other. And eventually, they end up pointing your guns in your general direction. Look here. The CIA armed the Sunnis to combat the Shiites and got that rich Saudi Sunni named Osama bin Laden. Ring any bells? Yeah. And then the U.S. changed course, arming the Shiites to combat the Sunni Mus uh, Saddam. They ended up with Shiite rendition of Saddam politics in Maliki, whose military handed over your guns to the enemy without a fight. Without a fight. The crazy part about the terror state war is that when ground troops eventually are deployed, mark my words, they will be, it'll be U.S. firepower fighting U.S. firepower. Yeah, Albert Einstein said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Even still, folks, here we are once again. We know a little about the group that we are arming, and but what we do know, it's not so good. All evidence tends to indicate that the moderate, vetted groups that the U.S. is training, well, that they work hand in glove with Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. So the U.S., 
is training Al-Qaeda pals to fight an Al-Qaeda offshoot, and both groups are using American firepower. Yeah. As for Harper, well, he's been clear. No training in Syria, no airstrikes in Syria, and no nothing in Syria, well, at least for now. We will strike ISIL where and only where Canada has the clear support of the government of that country. At present, this is only true in Iraq. If it were to become the case in Syria, then we will participate in airstrikes against ISIL in that country also. Now, the subject of a sunset clause has been an odd yet understandable fascination to we in the Western media as of late. No one wants a prolonged quagmire of troop deployment like we saw with Afghanistan or Iraq 1. Even still, uh, can you imagine Churchill telling Hitler, oh, well, Adolf will be out by June. Anyway, uh, Harper, unlike Obama, has put an expiration date or at least a reevaluation date at six months. As far as I can tell, Prime Minister Stephen Harper is in touch with the very, very, very many complexities of this combat mission and is addressing them accordingly. And make no mistake, we must address them. Our country cannot stand idly by. Canadians know that. The vast majority of us support the airstrikes. Now, only time will tell. The airstrikes will be enough. That, folks, is your byline.